Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. As you might know, I have been covering thermal typewriters. And in fact, when I took the time yesterday to file all of my papers that had been in that folder for a year, last year, I found there was a whole bunch of thermal writings, thermal typings that I've been doing in 2019. I, that's been a big year for thermal typewriters for me, as you well know if you've been following this channel. Well, I had five thermal typewriters, and I was ready to do a comparison, a master shootout of all these typewriters. In fact, I was working today on a spreadsheet, a master comparison spreadsheet, which will be a future video. But I have a sixth typewriter, another machine to cover. Uh, this is the Canon Type Star 5. Stay tuned. Well, this is the Type Star 4 right here. I've had this for a while. This is like the older brother to the Type Star 5. My Type Star 5 belonged to my friend Kevin, and it came in this hard carrying case. The Type Star 4s oftentimes are sold or seen in their hard case as well. Mine didn't come with a hard case. So let's open it up. So, first of all, carrying handles here, there's two flip out plastic latches on the front and you flip that open and that enables you to open the main lid of the case. Uh, there are storage compartments for two of the printing ribbons cartridges. I have one cartridge here. It's a blue uh, type cartridge. There's a little document holder location up here. My uh, Type Star 5 has the, the, the owner's manual in Japanese. It's a Japanese owner's manual. But uh, there's a lot of information you can deduce from this manual. And in fact, I love the artwork and I'll have to show you some of that later. But this is the Type Star 5. It is the red Type Star. I've already published a previous video that covers in detail the Type Star 4. I'll put a link to that video down below. Uh, as far as the differences between them, I've compiled this spreadsheet, which I'll cover in detail in a future video, but just to look at the feature differences between Type Stars 4 and 5. So they both have 15 character LCD displays. They both have a Courier 10 font and a cubic proportional spaced typeface. The Type Star 4 has a justified print mode. It'll fully justify the line. The Type Star 5 doesn't. They both have a one line correction memory. They both have tab stops, but the Type Star 4 has decimal tabs as well as regular tab stops. The 5 does not have decimal tabs. They both have two carriage knobs, and on both machines you can control the line feeding with manual clicks of the knobs. One click is a half line. Neither of them have a convenient tear edge for tearing off a roll of paper. And that's an issue with both of them. As far as the size and weight differences, they're pretty close. The Type Star 4 is larger in depth and height than the Type Star 5. They're both about the same width. As far as the weight difference, the Type Star 5 ends up weighing about 50 grams more roughly than the 4. This is without batteries. Neither of them have a, a snap-on lid for the, for the keyboard. Um, they both came originally with carrying cases. My 5 has the carrying case, my 4 doesn't. And they do not have an integral handle, like a flip-out handle like some of the other models. They both do have folding rear feet. So in the case of the Type Star 5, you have these little feet right here that you can fold down and deploy to raise the back of the machine up a little bit higher, as both of them are now, to give you a little bit better view of the LCD screen and the keyboard. Both machines use four D-cell batteries for power. The Type Star 4 came with an AC adapter. My Type Star 5 did not, and looking at the owner's manual, it appears that the AC adapter and an accessory nickel cadmium battery pack were optional. And so I consider that to be an option for this model. They both will charge internally NICAD batteries using the external charger. So there's a lot of similarities, but some differences as well. So the Type Star 5 can be powered from batteries, dry cells, uh, nickel cadmium batteries, or the AC adapter. I'm using the AC adapter off the Type Star 4 here just to power it for convenience sake. So let's, uh, the power switch is right on the side here. 
So the display on the Type Star 5 is a 15 character display with these little features on the bottom of the display that tell you the various modes, printing modes and all that. And you can change those by using the mode key, which is in the upper left corner here, and using the arrow keys and the return key. So for instance, this is currently flashing one character spacing. Then if I hit return, it'll go to either character print mode or line print mode. It's currently flashing the L, that means it's in line print mode. Then we have some printing modes. I'm in the standard printing mode. There's also an underline mode. There is a stretched mode and a stretched underline mode. So I'm gonna leave it in the standard print mode. Then the next thing is manual carriage return versus auto carriage return. I like the auto. Then we have two uh, typefaces or fonts. The Courier 10 is the A and the Cubic Proportional is the B, which I like that. And that is the selection of modes that it has. There is a code key on the bottom right corner. If you use that in conjunction with the one key, you can do centered typing. You can center your typing like a title, for instance. There is a manual adjustment for the density of the LCD display, and it's a pretty good display. I like the way it looks. You have settings for your left and right margin and for your tab set and clear in the upper right corner. And the space bar down below to the left of it is a repeat key. You can repeat whatever you've typed. And there's a relocate key which is used for the editing mode. Both the Type Star 4 and 5 have really intuitive editing features, which is one of the things I like about them. The uh, Type Star also has alternative key characters up on the upper row of keys and some of these keys over here and you get to that alternative uh, keyboard with the KB, the keyboard uh, indicator here and you either go with uh, keyboard 1 or keyboard 2. In the, in, the, in the display right there, it's set to keyboard one, which is the standard. When you have a key like this one, where there's four symbols, in keyboard one, it's lowercase is the slash, uppercase is the question mark. When you switch to keyboard two, it'll be the superscript. Two is lowercase and the superscript three is uppercase, for instance, there. Here is your backspace key, return key, right shift, and left shift. And here is your tab key. One of the things that took me a while to get used to with all of these thermal typewriters was when you go to caps lock, the light comes on and you're in the caps lock mode. But unlike a computer keyboard, you cannot get out of caps lock by hitting it again. It stays in caps lock and I've repeatedly made that mistake and mi mistakenly typed capital letters when I intended to type lowercase letters. The way you get out of caps lock is to hit either shift key again. And this is actually, if you think about it, this is the way a manual typewriter works. Now one of the areas of both Type Star keyboards that I don't like and I kind of rate both keyboards lower in quality in my experience is the fact that if you see the left shift key is nice and wide and it's even with the bottom row of keys, the right shift key is very small and it's really close to the return key. And if you see the way how wide the left shift key is, I can hit that left shift easily, not really having to be very accurate and it'll shift. But on the right side, you have to be very accurate with your shifting because if you overshoot your finger, you're going to do a carriage return. And I've done that repeatedly time and time again on both of these type stars. I do not like this key layout. There's also this depression here, this little space right here to the left of the return key where uh, it's kind of like wasted space. I wish they would have made the return key horizontal up here and made the shift key wider here. This is really about the only thing I don't really like about this keyboard. Okay, I'm going to feed some paper from my roll of thermal fax paper. This is the inexpensive Staples brand, thin thermal fax paper. So you want to slip the paper, of course, behind there. And then you uh, make sure your paper release lever is in the gripping position. And you can turn the right platen knob, or either or left, and you will manually feed the paper in. And if it feeds crooked, you just want to, of course, just like in a regular typewriter, release that and you can straighten out the paper, get it centered up and set it there. Each click of the knob is one half space. 
Okay, as long as you have batteries in the machine or it's plugged into AC, it will remember your settings. So I typically like to type in the single spaced mode, line print mode, normal font style, auto carriage return. I like the uh, proportional spacing and keyboard number one, of course, usually for the standard keyboard. So this is kind of set up for my typing here. In the line-by-line -line typing mode that I'm in, it will not begin to print until you've completed the entire line. And when it gets to the hot zone near the right margin, if you type a space or a hyphen, it'll automatically do the carriage return in the auto carriage return mode. Otherwise, you press the carriage return and it will print out. The printing is relatively quiet and the backspacing is relatively quiet. Um, it's a pretty good imprint it's not bad i would say the type star 4 definitely has better quality printing in my experience in fact um, there's only two other machines in my collection that have uh, worse type quality on thermal paper so this is like middle of the road in terms of quality of typing but i do like the correction features so for instance if i'm typing here and I want to go back and do a correction. I can just arrow back in the display and I can backspace to delete something. I can type a letter or something to insert something. And then to get back to where I continued typing before, I hit the relocate key here down on the lower right. And that'll relocate me back to the right side. And that makes a uh, very uh, intuitive uh, typing experience and editing experience. And it's not a bad printing style. It's not quite as dark as some of my other machines, but it's certainly better than some of them. And so it's a nice typeface. I like this proportional spacing. It is really nice. It's a nice looking typeface. So there is two issues that I know of about this particular machine. It's not endemic to the whole model line. It's just this particular sample machine has two serious issues I'd like to talk about. So the first issue that this machine has is this motor right here through this plastic gear train drives the paper roller. So it feeds the paper when you do a carriage return. And the problem with this is the internal gear train, there is a little reduction gear built into the motor and it is slipping intermittently. Intermittently it will do either, when it does a carriage return, it'll either not space up at all or it'll do a partial spacing. So that kind of makes this machine, this particular machine, unusable except for one thing that I'm going to do, which is either this set of gears or this little one back here. If I take the C-clip out and I remove that gear, then I can disable this drive motor completely and I can do a manual carriage return by clicking the either of the carriage knobs two clicks for one whole space. And I'm gonna probably start doing that when I wanna use this machine more often. Uh, these motors are made by Fuji and they're difficult if not impossible to find replacements for unless you have another machine as a parts machine. And by the way, the Type Star 4 uses a totally different mechanism so the motor and all that is not the same as the Type Star 5. But it's basically this little the reduction gear system in the motor is slipping and that's the problem with it. But it has another problem as well. And that problem is as I'm typing, it will intermittently beep at me. Like right there, I can't do anything except if I hit the margin release key, then it'll let me continue to type. And that problem is something internal to the electronics of the machine, and I have not been able to figure out the cause, but I have an easy solution, which is when it beeps at me and locks up, I just hit the margin release and continue. And by the way, it knows where the margin is. It's not losing the margin position. It's just somehow it's locking up the logic of the machine. So if I was to fix this line spacing issue, disable the motor so I, I can operate the line spacing manually, and then just use the margin release key whenever this little lockup happens, then this machine is usable. Well, when I assessed this typewriter, I tried to be fair to the condition it was in and not let the condition of this machine sway my impression of the whole model line. It's a cute little machine and it can't 
and beat the color. The, the red color is pretty nice, uh, you know, just aesthetically. My real complaint as far as haptics and usability is when you're using it with the rolls of paper, they have this edge up here with these little plastic teeth and on these little ribs, and I can't understand why Canon made it, made it that way, because both the Typestar 4 and 5 have that. And it prevents you from tearing the paper off on a roll of paper. Almost like they don't want you to do that. Or they didn't want you to use roll paper. Maybe they want you to use sheets of paper or something. But anyways, a lot of, at least half or two thirds of my other thermal typewriters have a sharp plastic edge that's ideal for tearing off the paper. So that's not a deal breaker on itself, but it is something to, keep in mind if you're interested in using rolls of paper. It's a cute little machine and oh yeah, let's talk about, before I quit here, let's talk about the owner's manual because there's some interesting artwork in the owner's manual. So we're far enough removed from the 1980s that we kind of forget how these machines were marketed and how they were intended to be used and I think it's real informative when you look at the artwork in this manual. This is so informative. Here is a businessman sitting in his office chair and he has the title Type star, and he's typing up a document from another sheet of paper, which is interesting, right? That's a usage mode. Here's a person, a lady that is sitting at a desk, again, working on a document, and it looks kind of like on both of these cases, the kind of usage you would see with a computer, right? It's sitting at the desk, but this is interesting, really, really interesting right here. Here's a person sitting on public transportation. Maybe this is a back seat of a car, perhaps like a taxi. And look, she's typing on her lap, lap typing, just like you would have years later with a laptop computer. And I think that's so interesting. Here's another one uh, that you'll see. There's a meeting going on, and this person is probably taking minutes of the meeting, taking notes right at the desk with his typewriter. And because it's a quiet operating typewriter, he's not going to interrupt the flow of the meeting. And here is another example of a person, a lady that is operating her machine, typing up a document in an office environment. And then when we talk about terminology and abbreviations and acronyms, I think it's interesting, ETW, Electronic Typewriter. So that was an abbreviation that Canon apparently was trying to market back in the 1980s. And for some reason, that acronym never stuck. I don't hear anybody talking about ETWs, but there it is, Canon ETW, that's interesting. And I think some of the warning uh, indicators here are kind of interesting to see. Don't lay them out in the sun, don't stick them in the hot trunk of a car, don't drop thumbtacks and paper clips and bobby pins and into the typewriter, things made of metal. And I guess don't vacuum them with a vacuum cleaner or something like that. That's kind of interesting. And here near the back of the manual, they talk about the accessory AC adapter that plugs in and the accessory NICAD battery pack that charges from the AC adapter. And of course, on the back of the manual, the date, copyright 1983 when this came out. So there it is, the Canon Typestar 5. It does not have justified mode, and it does not have decimal tabs, unlike the Typestar 4. Other than that, those two machines are very close together, and aside from the particular difficulties that this individual sample has, I think they're pretty decent machines. I really like the ease of editing, being able to move backwards in your typing line to be able to simply erase and insert new text and then return with the relocate key back to where you continued uh, typing. Really nice. I think the keyboard layout is one of the things where this suffers just the way this return and shift key on the right is. It's just trouble. It's problematic for us fast typists used to computer keyboards with a big wide shift key on either side of that bottom line. This is the Typestar 5. Cute little machine. So that makes six thermal typewriters in my collection. The Brother EP20, the Brother EP43, the Canon Typestar 4 and 5, the Sharp PA1050, and the Casio Writer CW10. The next thermal typewriter video I do, I believe I'm going to make a detailed comparison of all six machines using this fancy dancy spreadsheet that took me about half a day to build. And I rank all the features both in uh, 
objectively and features and subjectively how they seem to work for me, how I like them and how my individual sample of machines compare. And I'm gonna come up with a score and a ranking for all six of these machines. So stay tuned for that. Well, until next time, stay creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.